Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, we got a lot to do today, but in all due respect, um, what we're going to what we're going to be doing initially is that um, I wanted to let you know that uh, politics is going to be huge, and we're going to be spending quite a bit of time here on the Oregon Voters Digest talking about the issues that are of major concerns here within the community and throughout the state of Oregon, in fact, throughout from a national perspective. But we're not going to cover this at this point in time. You can check the Oregon Voters Digest for issues, for current issues, on my Facebook page aspect of it, Oregon Voters Digest, and that's my web page also, too. Okay, but with this, today, we're going to be basically announcing, again, we've done it before, the 31st anniversary of Victory Beyond the Dream, Dr. Martin Luther King Day. And that's quite an event uh, that's, that's going to be held right here locally. And uh, that's Monday, January the 18th, uh, 2016, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's going to be at the Highland Christian Center campus, 7600 Northeast Gleason Street, Portland, Oregon. Okay, so hey, this is what we're going to be doing. I'm going to spend the first three, first 15 minutes talking to two people, two icons, if you will, from the state of Oregon, no, from the USA, <laughs> from the USA, but just so happened the USA is in Portland, Oregon. I'm talking about two individuals, you, 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 as you can see them on the camera as, as I'm chatting about them a bit, is that uh, these people are well known. They're going to be a, a participating, if you will, in this event like many other folks. If you want to hear some good singing, a good gospel singing, and this, that, and the other, and meet community, and talk about issues and whatever, you need to go to this event. The 31st annual Victor Beyond the Dream, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Tribute. Okay, now, here are the two participants that's going to be out there with you. That they're going to say a few words. They're going to have the mic like I have, but they're going to have it at the event themselves. The Honorable mayor of our city here <laughs> the honorable paul Knowles. you've seen you've seen paul many times i can still remember the time i when i was in the marine corps and i came here as a marine recruiter i went to geneva's <laughs> and paul gave me the lay of the land and that's that's how i started here as a marine recruiter right here and paul basically introduced i said right paul right that's right up front and then we got the, the notable the, the outstanding the, the one and only mel brown and uh, if you and i'm, I'm not basically something business but i tend to go out and have dinner whenever i have me a couple of bucks with my wife I go down to Salty's or whatever. Ah. I go out downtown, and there's Mel. Right, Mel? That's correct. Okay, good. The, the notable Mel Brown. So, gentlemen, what we want to do is just kind of just just share with them just a couple of couple, couple of words or whatever about uh, who you are, Paul, and just kind of wrap a little bit about it. And and besides that, we, we talked about where, where's my piece? As you can see, I'm trying to remember that. I'm, I'm thinking about your night here, the night to, to remember Paul Nall's 85th birthday and roast. Yes. Wow. Oh my God. Well, I'm going to begin right now. <laughs> I just started. <laughs> Come on, Paul, give it up. <laughs> well, every five years I have a birthday party. So uh, okay. this is my 85th. And uh, if you miss this party, you have to wait till I'm 90. Oh. And it may not be a next one, so they should come to this one. Well, me too. I mean, I'll be with you. So. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be a great time. My sister Lily and all is going to be singing. They'll be dancing later, but I oh, uh, want the yeah. ladies to wear all their big fancy hats. It's oh, going to be God. a real blowout. So oh, wow. That is on the 23rd. I don't know, I don't know if they can Saturday. visualize this piece, but can you? Can we do this piece a little bit? Can you? Can you hook on this? Can you see this? Can you see this? Let's see if we can just hone in on this deal. I see some hats that are already on there. There's some hats. In yeah, here. this is the church yeah. hat. You know, everybody wears the church oh, hat, oh, and yeah. we want them to wear that's that cool. hat. That's and cool. Come on that's out looking, to the party. That's looking good. Okay, good. We got that piece. And that's Paul with your hat. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. Well, I'll tell you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think about Denzel, you know, when, when he played the uh, Malcolm X. Remember, you saw that mm -hmm. movie? Uh, Remember how he dressed up that first right, time around? Right. He had that big hat with, with the deal. <laughs> no, that was, um, who was the guy that did that film? What was that? Spike Lee. Spike Lee, when he when he when he came out entry wide, he had a he was really dressed up, just really sharp for days aspect of it. Danville, okay, great good. actor. But anyway, Paul was was the famous. He was the Geneva's. I mean, that's really where that was the the highlight of of the community. Everybody went oh, there, right? Yeah. Wouldn't you oh, say so, Mel? Yeah. Well, it actually so. started at the Cotton Club, which uh, Mel Brown then was about 17 years old. Wow. He was our premier yeah. drummer there, <laughs> wow. and uh, going wow. to Portland State to Gee, be an accountant. Gee, and, Oh, Mel. Wound yeah. up with the Temptations, uh -uh. Diana Ross, 
for Tops, Martha and the Vandellas. So he's been all over the country traveling with them for years. And of course, now he's back in Portland doing his wow. thing right here wow. in Portland. Yes, mm, mm. So, Mel, you, are you from? You, you, you born, I was born and raised here. You were born and raised here? Right. Mm, I think of that Shirley and Nanette when I, when I see him, too. You know what I'm saying? Shirley is, a, is also a kind of right. a, oh, know, yeah. a staple you know, within the particular community aspect of it. Sure. Well, folks, this gives you an idea of, of some of the things that you will be able to. Um, to be able to take advantage of if you come to the event because Paul's going to be yeah. at the podium. He's going to he's going to be given the opportunity to say a few more words, talk about a little background, a little history, and this, that, and the other. He reckon he knows everybody there, but the <laughs> fact, man, for those of you who have have not had the opportunity uh, to roast him, in fact, there will be will there be an opportunity to get the mic to to see a couple <laughs> things about you? I mean, a couple of people get to do that. I have some selected people, but there will, there will be some. I'm gonna have my Buffalo audience. Soldier uniform. When I know I'm gonna say I'm gonna just come on up there and just take. You know how I am anyway, Paul. All right, all right. <laughs> I will, but I'm gonna have my own caption. I'm gonna get that together. <laughs> the Mel's gonna be there. I'm gonna have to throw a little taste on Mel too. Now Mel, they're gonna give you a little time to say a couple of things, aren't you? Are you gonna say a couple of things? They really know. haven't told me. I'm gonna play. Okay, you yeah. wanna play? You are gonna play. Uh, yeah, one of my groups is yeah. yeah my, okay. Well, maybe there's a possibility you group. might be there. You know, Paul will be there anyway. Paul might just make make I'll, fun. I'll be introducing Mel. You will be a, meeting a little okay. story about him. Oh, that's good. And, yeah. And uh, so Should that'll be, be my introduction to introduce Mel. Yeah. Well, maybe what we can do, we can continue this conversation. Maybe at another point in time where we, we oh, can have sure, this kind of a little sure. open this kind of a deal and, and chat a little bit about this a little bit more. Oh, that, that would be fantastic. fantastic. That'd be good. That'd be good. Very we good. Might even, That's something right, for your and, you know, and actually, we want to make sure we've got a diverse. We may have to get Shirley in there to get a woman in there. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Geneva might be checking us out. So where, where, where are the women? You know what I'm saying? And we get her in this little, this little grouping, if you will, and we'll just chat it that way. How's that? Right. Oh, yeah, well, she's right. going to have a lot of funny things to say because she's my cousin. Oh, well, come on. Yeah, you really? didn't know that? I didn't know that. Yeah. Gee, but all this time, I tell you what, I, I've been so busy on this. <laughs> <day. Yeah. laughs> So, Paul, any, anything else? How, how's everything going? You, know, you got the barbershops going real well? Yeah, everything's going well. We've uh, been in business over 50 years, wow. been in the location wow. where we are now for about 25 years, wow. and, uh, you know, everything's going well. We're just so honored to be able to be on the avenue yeah. because... If we didn't own that building, we wouldn't be able to stay there now. The rent would be so high. Yeah, that, yeah. So we've been blessed. We've yeah. been very fortunate. Very fortunate. Now, you've got to mention Geneva. I mean, let's talk a little oh, bit about right, her. Geneva. Because those, <laughs> those other years that you didn't talk about where that location, that's where she was. She yes, had that yes, piece yes, beside yes, her, yes. right? And uh, she kept me pretty straight because I remember she was a size 12 and she went to a 14. So I, honey, don't get thick on me, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just said, well, Paul, I'll tell you what. You handle the part you can handle. I get someone else to handle the other part. So I, <laughs> I never mention weight anymore. I didn't want anybody to handle that other part. Uh -huh. so that's, that's it for <laughs> <laughs> she was straight far with Geneva. Oh, I love, I love it. So you, you ever go? You, I'm sure you visit the, the the shop every so often, right? On Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, right? Every morning. Every every morning. I'm there every day. Every yes, day. I open up at night. And where's Junior? Where's Paul Junior? Does he does he do the work before you get there? Well, he's there, but you know, <laughs> I, I can't sit around and watch Judge Judy all day, so I go to work. <laughs> That junior boy, I tell you, he does that Facebook. He does his Facebook. Trust me, he does his Facebook. I catch him every so often, too. Right. So, Mel, how about you? Well, you're still active, right? You, you. Very much so. I've got five bands. you got five bands. Five bands. Right. So. What are some of the locations? Well, I know where you are, but why don't you let them know? Let, let okay, well, Tuesday, you Wednesday, and Thursday, I'm at a place called Jimmy Max. Jimmy Max. Right, down in okay. Portland. Down in the Portland. In the Portland. Right. right. Tenth and Everett. Tenth and, Tenth and Everett? Uh, right. Okay. And then on Fridays, I'm at Salty's. Yeah. And Saturdays, I'm at the Portland Prime. Portland Prime, right, right, right. right, right. It's quite a, that's, that's a nice facility there, too, by the way. It is. The it's gentleman, what's the guy's name, gentleman? Frank Taylor. Frank, Frank. Frank's very, you know. Yeah, so a lot of things are happening. We did a commercial last night for the place, and the yeah. bar has been changed around. And new things are happening now. Okay. So you, can, so you can catch both of these guys. You can catch you in the, in the evening, right? Oh, right. Uh, and on those various so. dates aspect of it. And you get Paul in the morning. Yeah, get your hair cut, and you then you go down to see Mel. That's right. But catch you early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you had coffee? Coffee's already ready? What time? What time, Paul, can they catch you? About Open six? Open at 9 a.m. Oh, oh, oh. What time? What time do you catch you? What time do you, you? At 9. At 9? I'm there at 9 a.m. You know, you know, yeah. I remember that time you were always running all the time. You know, remember you, 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 you 
exercise. Oh, yeah, the 26-mile marathon. You did trying to yeah. kind of a deal. Well, you know, yeah. old Bruce, you know, old, old Marine Corps type, you know. We may have to get back and do a little running. Uh, we'll probably no, just go around no, inside no, the building. No, we won't. Uh, we might be inside <laughs> no, the won't. building. We'll be inside the building. <laughs> we won't run now, I guarantee you. I used to be a jock, and I don't even run up and down the steps anymore. <laughs> oh, gee. Well, well, well let's just let them know that we'll be inside. I'm going to make sure we'll be inside Paul's place when we do the running. <laughs> like Around one of the chairs or something. Like Paul and I was <laughs> We both agreed on the things that's when I get up in the morning and I tie my shoes, I look around to see what else I can do while I'm down there. <laughs> I'm not coming back down in the morning. Baby. Uh, Tell me, guys, sure. anything to say about to, to the folk, <clears throat> people about Martin Luther King Day and you know, through the years? I'm sure you've seen these events and whatever from the standpoint of what do you, what do you think, Paul? You, you, you think well, you, I've been going to them for years. I haven't made all 30 of them, but I tell you, it's a day that you will always remember. Mm -hmm. The music, the choirs, the church groups, the high school groups, uh, <clears throat> choirs, the musicians. It's just unbelievable. People that mm -hmm. you wouldn't even know, they just knew anything about Dr. King. They're mm -hmm. there to express yeah. their you know, interests and uh, what they believe in at the event. It's a very, very nice event. And I give Ken Berry oh, yes, and Donnie and Adair, and Jeffrey Brooks, you Rice, know, Rice. Middle, Mr. Uh, Chappie Rice. Right. They, they're all, they've been there for a long time. Fantastic. And they're doing a great job. Good, good. Mel, how about yourself? Now, you're going to be playing, right? Right. I'm going to, actually, <laughs> there's two tunes that I'm going to play. That's, okay. Um, Ken asked me to do, and one was by Marvin Gaye that I used to work with, mm -hmm. and the other one was called "People Make the World Go Round." Wow, wow! Can't miss that. They can't miss that. Oh well, they I'm gonna. That. They're all gonna be short because you know when I was with the Temptations, all of our stuff segued all the time. Yes, yes. And I have to put in a tune that we actually wrote at Paul's place at the Cotton Club. Oh wow! So I'm gonna do "People Make the World Go Round" and "What's Going On" by Marvin Gaye, but I'm gonna have to end it with a tune called "The Pygmy." Oh, Pygmy! Wow. Oh my God! Wow! <laughs> yes. <Good. laughs> wow! That's huge. And that's that what we made while we were at the Cotton Club. Is that right? Working for Paul. Wow! Billy Larkin, Mel Brown, and that's Hank Swan. Swan. Wow! <laughs> And that was at Cotton Club, right? Yeah, right, that, that, right. Was that, that was at Williams. I'm mean, seeing my thoughts online. 2125 North Vancouver the Avenue. Old, the, the, yeah. <laughs> the only nightclub so on he, the West Coast yeah. with wall the wall soul. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. See, what is it? CRN? Was that the way it was? Can't remember nothing. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> you beat me on that one, buddy. You beat me on that one. You know, you know, you beat me on that one. But as you can see, folks, you're gonna, you, you really have a, an opportunity to see these two guys and meet them and say hi to them at this event. It's a very notable event, a very wor worthwhile event. The community really looks forward to that that event and and, and, and other entities around the, the area and the like. So it's it's gonna be a fun day, and it's something that's memorable because, you know, hopefully we'll still be around for the next one next year. Because we always have these meetings, like the gathering. We get together and see each other and have a great time. Yes. But then the, within the next year, I get a phone call. So-and-so's not with us anymore. Right. So, you know, right. it's, it's yes. important yes. that you get yes. out and yes. see Paul and myself. Yeah. And, and, and even old Bruce Marines, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably be posting the colors for the last day. <laughs> right. You'll get to see me in my Buffalo Soldier uniform. I'm a That's lifetime great. member of that, that event. And, oh, yeah. Uh, right. as, as far as the local organization, they've got their own thing. I paid my dues. Mm -hmm. And the idea, but the fact of the matter is, I would I would even suggest that uh, young folks who are in the military, or prime military, whether they, whatever age you are, to consider joining the organization, the local organization. It's a, it's a very good organization. Good to do. The camaraderie ship is always good for everybody. For that I should matter. remember my son, he's a Marine. Is that right? Well, right. get him on over to me. In fact, he should join that local organization. Anybody can join mm -hmm. in the military. And it's very, very important, you know what I'm saying? So, gentlemen, this has been great. And, and uh, so, like I said, what's going to happen now is that Donnie there, one of the one of the guys, they're going to come in because they got better memory, right? <laughs> and so Donnie's going to sit in my chair, and then he's going to just take over there from there, and he's going to be bringing all the other folks to kind of give give uh, folks a, a sampling, if you will, of some of the activities that's going to be at the at this particular function at the at the um, let's see the Highland Christian Center campus there on Gleason Street, mm -hmm. and it, it, this is going to be an all-day event from 11 to 6. So it's gonna be it's gonna be quite yes. a bit of information. Yeah. Yeah. So it's gonna be really neat. Gonna be really neat. So guys, anything? Any last? Any last comments? 
Mm -hmm. I'm just looking forward to this. Actually, okay. getting a chance to You know, they do ask uh, to bring canned goods. So, oh, canned goods, right. Yes, canned goods, because then it filters to the shelters and everything. Oh, they can donate money, right. too. They can donate yes. money, checkbooks uh -huh. or whatever. I don't know if they're going to But everybody got a couple of cans I, up I'm, there that I, in their cabinet. That. Yeah. <laughs> bring them on over. Yeah. And remember this guy's birthday now, the 85th birthday. 85th birthday and roast. That's the one I'm gonna be into. That, that, that's where I'm gonna go. That's gonna be I mean, I'm gonna have to be the wife home, but I'll sit over there. But the roast is gonna be something else. You don't know what to expect from me. He knows that about me. I might just walk up there and just take the mic. <laughs> See, I don't know who. I don't know who's gonna be the MC, but they're gonna have problems with me. See, since if I'm gonna go, I got to say something. Okay, we'll I got get to you say, on. Okay, they, have, they have to videotape this roast because it's gonna be a classic. Oh, oh I, you know it is. You know what I mean? I yeah, want to make sure. Tony Sibley, he's gonna be videoing. So. Oh wow! Oh, wow! Wow! Yeah. Great. So guys, we're gonna take a short break, and then thanks again. I'll see you there, right? Thank you. Okay, my friend. Thank you. Okay, Thank you very much, Sounds Bruce. great, buddy. Exactly. Okay. We'll take a short break, folks, and then we'll get Donnie here to take over the show, and he'll go from there. Take care, and check out that Oregon Voters Digest for your politics. All the updates right there on my Facebook page, Oregon Voters Digest. Take care. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Hey everybody, welcome back to Voters Digest. I'm Donnie Adair, and it's a pleasure to be back with you and bring some of the uh, stories that are important to our community. We're continuing our dialogue this afternoon, talking about the 31st annual celebration of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, <clears throat> sponsored by the World Arts Foundation. And along with some of the good things that will be happening on stage, like the tribute that was talked about in our earlier segment with Mel Brown and the honoring of Lifetime Achievement awardees like Geneva Knowles, we're going to have our Victory Village. Yes. And uh, uh, with me today is Sunshine Dixon, yes. who is our coordinator yes. for the Victory Village. <laughs> Thank you for being with us and sharing what's going to happen on that day. And I understand you have a guest with you as well. I have a special guest, one of our longtime partners for the Victory Village, which was the Dream Village at one point, um, and it's uh, Mrs. Emma Macon, and she's with Macon Art, one of the many um, people that you'll be able to see when you come to the Victory Village and to celebrate the Martin Luther King event on um, Monday. Well, Emma, welcome to Voters Digest, and you as well, Sunshine. Sunshine, just talk about how we got to this place. How yeah. did the Victory Village evolve? How did it begin and what's the purpose? Well, um, you know, I'm a little bit of a latecomer. Some of the people that are part of the World Arts Foundation have been here for 30 plus years. Yeah, that's some I'm of not have. one of them. I'm a newcomer in that terms. I've probably been here about seven. And the village has been here a little bit more than 10, probably more than a decade. 
and I'm really happy with what it provides the community. Um, basically, it's an outflow. There were, you know, events that were happening and people would gather in the hallway and mingle and talk and someone had the really bright idea. Let's give them a space for that. Let's give mm -hmm. them a space to connect. This whole thing is about community. Let's give them a platform for that opportunity. And so micro business, solopreneurs, local um, civic groups mm -hmm. were invited to come in and kind of share their wares, share their stories mm -hmm. together in a community setting. And so that began before my arrival. But since then, since I've come on board, I've been able to meet so many amazing people in the community, like Ms. Emma Macon, um, who's joined us and been a longtime partner. They financially partner with us to help put on the village. And then they benefit from folks coming up to their tables. You can tell them more. How, um, how has it been being a part of the World Arts Foundation um, Victory Village? Well, it's been wonderful. I think we started probably when it first started, so mm. probably over a decade we've been with them. And um, we have, ho I do home art shows also. Mm -hmm. And so through the uh, village, we get a lot of people that come through and see this ethnic art, and we have all kinds of art, but they see it and they also sign up for shows and everything, mm -hmm. so it's benefit us by this. Mm -hmm. And the community, when they see this kind of art, which they don't see in the stores or in the schools, they are, are impressed and they can order or they can tell me what they want. If we don't have it, we'll try and get it. And at one time we had an art gallery downtown mm -hmm. where, um, um, Saturday market used to be. Mm. So anyway, it, it's involved a lot of people in the community and when they come into homes that people have bought some of the art that we've had there, they say, where did you get it? And mm. I get a lot of contacts by that. And I've always been a lover of art. Mm. Can you describe some of your art? I think we have a, at least one piece yeah. to show. Right, right. Can, you know, now this is one of my favorite pieces here. Um, the artist here is J.C. Wider. And he went to school with my husband in South Carolina, and so he has connections there. But he's a wonderful artist. This is Seven Brides, and he uses a mixture of uh, materials, you know, to build up the canvas, so it's almost like a collage, you know, what he uses in his paintings. But this is an original piece, and it's very wonderful and a little bit expensive, but the most art yes. that we have smaller is pieces. smaller pieces are very affordable. This is one through the company that I work for, and this is an 8x10 original. The artist on this one is Haverty. But we have many more kinds of art besides ethnic art. We have abstracts, which I like also. Okay. Yes. Tell us what other kinds of things are displayed. What are other kind of booths you have at the Victory Village? And I, just for our, our audience, I want to let you know we're talking about the Victory Village. It's going to be at the 31st Annual Celebration of Martin Luther King on the holiday, January 18th, from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. at Highland Christian, Christian. Center, 7600 Northeast Gleason in Portland, 76 in Gleason. So you're invited to come out and join us and to, to get not only a great program, featuring live art, dance, music, singing, and some good speech making, but our Victory Village, mm -hmm. which has uh, members of the community, mm -hmm. organizations represented, individuals um, <clears throat> not only selling wares, but also providing information. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about the different kinds of people that will be displaying. So you hear um, that World Arts is at the intersection of education and arts, and you see that in the Victory Village. You see people sharing stories about their victories in um, bringing people together, telling them about art, bringing powerful images into the home. You also have civic leaders and civic programs that are sharing opportunities, whether it's job opportunities, information about how to vote. Um, there are going to be people there signing folks, uh, registering people to vote. Um, we have uh, groups like the Portland Police. We have um, POEM, which mm -hmm. is the emergency uh, management program. So we have some great organizations, health organizations, North, North, North by Northeast um, Clinic, mm -hmm. as well as Providence. So we have great uh, program partners like PGE and Enterprise that also come alongside and provide information about their organizations, about jobs, mm -hmm. trainings, internships, as well as just general mm -hmm. information for public. What's the busiest time during the day? Oh, my goodness. Is it all throughout, or do people come at a certain time? Mostly? There's a steady buzz, but I would have to say um, we really start uh, 
filling up between a, a 12 30 and two o'clock mm -hmm. you see the la la largest number of people during that time we do also have some fantastic acts that are on stage so sometimes although we don't necessarily have this huge crowd in the victory village section there's a huge crowd there listening to wonderful performances right. that have been right. brought to town or well, great speakers it's been my experience that maybe if you can get to the village a little early, mm -hmm. you might get some access to some things that you might miss because especially with books mm -hmm. and videos and things like that, mm -hmm. they go pretty fast. And mm -hmm. this is a place where you can get ethnic videos and books mm -hmm. uh, or get more access to those than in most uh, of these kinds of exhibitions. This is a wonderful program that it allows solopreneurs, people that are first timers, micropreneurs, those, you know, it's great to have an established business, a long term business, and we support women and minority businesses, local businesses. But there are some people just taking their baby steps in terms of business, and it's mm -hmm. great to see them and to support them. And we, uh, we also have teenagers that there sometimes they have a table or a booth mm -hmm. and they're showing their wares. It's wonderful mm -hmm. to be there and be available to learn about your neighbors and your neighborhood and ways that you can support community. You got a little bit you have a little bit of food there too, don't you? Yes, we have food from Highland Christian Center as well as our own um, booths like um, indulgence. She brings these beautiful desserts, mm -hmm. um, exquisite indulgent desserts. So we have a number of vendors that come alongside. I happen to be an artist. So mm -hmm. to see the makings um, help promote art in the way that they do, it really um, is a special place in my heart. And we do have some local artists, children um, that are artists, as well as those mm -hmm. individuals that are local in our community. So, Emma, other thoughts you might have about the Victory Village? How many years have you been participating? I think probably at least 10. Okay. Mm -hmm. At least. Okay. Yes. And just, just tell us how you feel about it and uh, its evolution. Right. Well, we look forward to it every year because we get so many people that come in, you know, to this because of the program and because of the village. And we get to meet a lot of new people. Mm -hmm. And then it promotes the business too. So we meet a lot of people that become friends and we are still friends with them and if they need more art they always recommend us to their other friends and so it's worked out very well for us well you've been yes. a very good uh, supplement to our mm -hmm. program on stage because a lot of people come to the program and it's from 11 to 6 and that's a long time to go and sit even as good as the program is mm -hmm. and so it gives them an opportunity to go to the village and make that connection, as you indicated. Right. Uh, for me, a lot of times, it's, for 31 years, hmm. it's been like New Year's, my New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us feel that way because we're going to see yeah. old friends, some of whom we only see on this day. Right. And right. there'll be, we say, two to 4,000 yeah. people that That's will really come great. through the auditorium that yeah, day yeah. and through the Victory Village. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a great opportunity to just to connect right. and, and reinvigorate people around Martin Luther King's dream mm -hmm. around our need to continue to fight for equality mm -hmm. uh, throughout this country and throughout the world and, and, and to recognize that we're still facing discrimination mm -hmm. in a lot of right. different areas. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, we come together and it's somewhat of a festival, mm -hmm. but you're also going to hear some words of wisdom mm -hmm. that will help us keep our eye on the prize, mm -hmm. which is getting the freedom for everybody in this country. Right. And again, we do have a health partner. So some mm -hmm. of those, some of the information provided by our health partners allow you to mm -hmm. come together the next year because you maybe, ha maybe had an in intervention. Mm -hmm. Maybe you uh, found out your blood pressure was too high or something that um, is useful for you to uh, make a turn, make a change and move forward with your life. So I'm happy to be part of the World Arts Foundation. And I'm so glad the Victory Village Marketplace is part of partner and we look forward to folks coming to visit us this year well we're very very happy to to have you as a part of our production team and you do an excellent job sunshine and we just i don't know what we would really do mm -hmm. without you so uh just reminding people we're talking about the 31st annual uh celebration of the life and legacy of the reverend dr martin luther king jr the world arts foundation incorporated each year for the last 30 years has put together a program that brings the community together and it's from 11 
a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah, six hours of, of great programming. And uh, you can come out and get it live at uh, Highland Christian Center, 7600 Northeast Gleason in Portland. And uh, or you can get it on KBOO Radio. Uh, you know you can get it yeah, not only locally but internationally. If you go to www.kboo.fm, anywhere in the world, you'll be mm -hmm. able to get our program live. So we're an international program, and, we and also, also have PCN. we're the second largest celebration of Dr. King's mm -hmm. birthday in the country. Mm -hmm. The only other one that's bigger is in. Atlanta, Georgia, wow. where his the Center for Peace and Freedom is, is at, his wow. uh, birth uh, town and so forth. So uh, this is it's a, means a lot, not yeah, only to the local area, to the region, mm -hmm. and also to the country. So. You can definitely watch it here on PCM as well. Well, I think we're approaching our break. And I want to thank you again, Sunshine Dixon. Thank you. Uh, Imogene Macon for making our program, one that citizens are going to really enjoy. And uh, I'll see you on the 18th. Okay. Hey there. Thank you. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Voters Digest, and I'm Donnie Adair, guest host. And I've got two great, great guests with me that I've had an opportunity to work with over the years. First of all, Chisao Hata, and then Valerie Peterson Owens. Yes. Now, these people are really special to me because they are also announcers for our celebration of That's Dr. Right. King mm -hmm. coming up on the 18th. And... Uh, uh, Chisau has worked with me now. You couldn't figure eight, out how many. We said eight or ten <laughs> years. And Just Val rounded out to yes. ten. <laughs> and Valerie is coming on in her first year as an MC, but yes. has had other roles in the program yes. in the, the last couple of years. And so mm -hmm. we've appreciated the things that she's done behind the scenes and also uh, on stage last year. And we're going to talk more about that. But ladies, thank you. Thank for coming you. on Thanks today for having me. Absolutely. And, and all the things that you do. Chisa, I want to start with you to talk about, just tell us what being a part of this program means to you. Well, I, I remember when it started, mm -hmm. and that was you were looking for somebody, and you're asking me, well, what do you think? Do you, who do you know? And I was like, uh, I could help you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then it sort of stuck after mm -hmm. that, right? Right. Um, well, now you have an so arts background. I do have a performance background. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an actor and performing artist, and so that probably was helpful. But And teacher? And teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Parent, I mean, I grandparent. Think that, yes, I, <laughs> yeah. that's one Very of the things cool. that we saw yeah. in you in terms of uh, helping us to, to bring on these mm -hmm. uh, different 
uh, dancers and singers mm -hmm. and dramatic presentations was was your background. It's also really been great because I'm at an elementary art school, mm -hmm. one of the only ones in the city, although mm -hmm. I think there are going to be more. Um, to have the students exposed and have the opportunity to perform. Mm -hmm. So our chorus has mm -hmm. been there every year, and I used to bring some dancers, and yes. kind of found it kind of hard to go from <laughs> MC right. to to a dance director. But it's just been a wonderful experience to be with you and to watch not only what it looks like in the forefront, mm -hmm. but behind the scenes and all the action and activity and thought and organizing. It looks really together because there's a lot of hard work mm -hmm. that goes into well, now, it. Last year was your first year right. participating with us mm -hmm. as a performer. Right. And uh, you also have family members, your, your lovely daughters, two blessed who, mm -hmm. who do praise dance, yes. have been on now like several years and they're coming back again this year. So mm -hmm. you've been behind the scenes. Tell us about your role this year okay. and how you know, you feel, you feel about joining our team. Right. Well, Chiselle had just made a comment about different roles and being on different sides, and I definitely feel that way. Years ago, when it first started, I was a, a participant in terms of just going to the shows at mm -hmm. Jefferson High School when it was at Highland, very uh, diverse in terms of the community and the location. And then I got an opportunity to be a volunteer when my girls mm -hmm. were participants. And so here I am now working behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's a refreshing feeling because I have the opportunity now to really see how this entire thing plays out, mm -hmm. the importance of this in our community, uh, and really what it takes to make this work. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot uh, more involved than people may see when it comes on on the 18th. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of dedication and hard work. Um, I'm very proud and very happy to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm very excited about my role and the responsibilities that I've been entrusted with. Uh, and well, now you're him. you're a brilliant writer. Well, thank <laughs> you. Know, you. That's one of the reasons why thank we you. we ask you to take on a, a role in coordinating the Lifetime Achievement yes. Awards. Talk about that. I'm excited. I was uh, just pleased when I was asked by Mr. Barry and yourself, Mr. Dare, to, to take on that role. And so what I've done is pretty much work side by side with you, alongside with Mr. Barry and others in coordinating the uh, participants or the awardees, mm -hmm. keeping complete contact with them, making sure that uh, narratives are created, that they are highlighted to the best. And of these the will abilities. be in the program. They too. will be at the, pro yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's important that uh, they feel comfortable and feel uh, proud of the accomplishments mm -hmm. and the achievements that they've made. And so for me to be a part of that in assisting and making them and helping them feel that way is, is a profound feeling. Well, a lot goes into it the way that we are doing it now, and I, I enjoy it so much because, mm -hmm. as you know, we we were here at the studios of Portland Community yes. Media, and we had uh, all of our the lifetime achieve right. uh, awardees mm -hmm. uh, here, and we are letting them tell their stories uh, to the degree possible right. through their in their own words mm -hmm. by going on camera and then editing right. a piece about them, which is a little bit different from the way that we used to do okay. it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think production-wise and product-wise, as far as what the audience gets, mm -hmm. I think they get closer and a more intimate knowledge of what our lifetime achievement awardees have contributed to our community. Right. I think it's great because, as you're stating, having that video footage prior to the event allows the awardees a more comfortable pace, so to speak, to be able to share their stories, uh, to be able to take the time to have that interview uh, prior to the live event so that they can really share and highlight their, their achievements. Um, I think that's important, and I, I like to uh, equate this uh, MLK program to maybe a, the Grammys, the big national, uh, you know, the award shows that we have, that we watch on TV and rant and rave about. But to me, this is very similar that we are highlighting and, and providing a forum for our heroes and our uh, uh, great accomplishments that are made here in our own hometown. Right. Right. Well, a neat thing that we did last year was to print the names of all the people mm -hmm. who received Lifetime Achievement right. Awards for the entire time we've been giving right. them. And I don't think we didn't start out giving these awards. It was, 
I think four or five years Glasses. at least right. into the process mm -hmm. when we decided, well, this is a chance for us to highlight people great. who've it's continued wonderful. Martin Luther King's dream, right. he, who, uh, who are uh, sharing his values, right. who are uh, really doing things in the community that are worthwhile mm -hmm. and, and, and making our community a better place to live. Right. And to me, with that, as you're stating, even our title for this year, Victory Beyond the Dream, that's very uh, true to itself with the Lifetime Achievement Award honorees and things that they've been accomplishing since Martin Luther King's legacy began. Mm -hmm. Giselle, tell us, just how do you feel about, you know, the work that you've been doing? with our program you know what's it like on that day for you when you come <laughs> and, and and have to work with all of us backstage and then go on camera and all that stuff mm -hmm. well you know i've been involved for quite a few years mm -hmm. even before i was an mc mm -hmm. i used to come on as a performer or bring students as performers mm -hmm. and i've just really marveled and i think been really proud mm -hmm. to see how the program has developed right. and even in its technology ability you know yes. it's in mm -hmm. um i mean it could have kept doing the same thing over and over but i think everybody has grown and brought more skills and talents right. and and actually been able to develop their mm -hmm. their skills in areas that maybe they wouldn't have and so what I really like about it is the spontaneity mm -hmm. that you have to be ready as an MC. Get ready yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for anything. I've been told. Um, and yeah. and it's and it's definitely a think on your feet. Mm -hmm. Be ready to go. Right. And well, it's really interesting mm -hmm. to me, especially uh, musically speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, gospel music, which we have a lot of, not only our uh, home church, right. Highland, but other churches, regional gospel organizations, mm -hmm. groups uh, uh, from Seattle, different places. And it, it's interesting to me that oftentimes what you find is those groups are not performing. They are witnessing. It's, wow. it's different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they're, they're, they're doing something that they truly believe in. Right. And gospel music was the movement, uh, music of the civil rights movement. Yes. And a lot of the, the social meetings and so forth took place in churches, churches. and there was a mm -hmm. lot of prayer and there was a lot of stuff like that. So we present that from not a religious point of view, mm -hmm. but from historical point mm -hmm. of right. view. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's really neat that we have our schools participating and kids can view right. the civil rights movement uh, more deeply than they could from a perspective in a classroom. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, it's a historic true. and cultural, um, I don't know, like mm -hmm. a really rich place right. that, yeah. that people can come. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, right. like I think the people before said it's, you get to see people that you hadn't seen in a long right. time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Artists connect, conversations happen. Definitely in that work. That, and the diversity. Just in that day mm -hmm. and the diversity of the day yeah. and the yes. people and who's involved and who you meet and right. all that. Yeah. And I mean, I, the diversity in our program, is, it's hard to say what you will see. Because, I mean, uh, Bobby Folder, who's bringing a, a dance group right. this mm -hmm. year, has done some things in the, fast, in the past where he put together Irish dancers and African dancers oh, wow. dr dancing together to African drum music. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't believe how that would open up your mind to how much that we have in common because you know yeah. mm -hmm. people say oh no we can dance we don't want to really dance Start right. but when you saw <laughs> the Irish dancers right. dancing to the same rhythm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as African dancers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you saw that there was very little difference there right. we both was like getting down right. or whatever <laughs> it, it, it was just amazing yeah. to bad. me mm -hmm. and so I'm looking to see what he brings to us interesting. this year interesting. with this group. Uh, mm -hmm. And we've had other, we've had uh, Latino bands. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we've had today, or this time around, Ed Edmo, Native American right. storyteller. We've had other people from the Native American community that we've honored and that have spoken. Uh, we've had people from the Asian community. Mm -hmm. We try to be as multicultural as we can, mm -hmm. uh, because that was the movement yes. that Dr. King led. It yes. was not just black people, it was just not just Christian, it was mm -hmm. 
many different people. And we're people. still <laughs> needing to do that work. Yes, we're, we're needing to we're do. We're needing it. to. We're do seeing that. We have to do that right. work. You know, because we, we're trying. To, we're still up against uh, institutionalized isms, racism, ableism, sexism. Uh, All of those. Uh, yeah. Homophobia, it may not go away. everything. We just yeah. have to mm -hmm. keep working. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we do. We do. But I can talk about it all day. <laughs> all day. <laughs> all day. <laughs> and we will on January 18th I at our 30th annual uh, celebration yeah. of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I do want to mention some of our sponsors because it's important mm -hmm. uh, Portland Public Schools, Providence Health and Services, big support for us mm -hmm. this year, Enterprise. Holdings, which is the parent company for Enterprise Rent a Car, Alamo, uh, a whole bunch of right. them. Uh, Portland Association of Teachers, Oregon Education Association, mm -hmm. City of Portland TriMet, Concordia University, KBU, Portland Community Media. So, yeah. So, thank you. Thank I'm gonna. You. We're gonna in this next segment. We're gonna bring in our executive producer <laughs> Ken Berry right. to. Uh, close our show and give mm -hmm. us his thoughts about the upcoming celebration. Okay. Thank I'm you so guys excited. so much. Thank you. Thank Look you forward so to it. Much. Everybody come. Yes. Absolutely. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back to Voters Digest. I'm Donnie Adair. We're talking about the 31st annual tribute to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It's going to be held on the holiday, sponsored by the World Arts Foundation. And uh, we brought uh, Sunshine Dixon back, who's uh, managing our Victory Village, and mm -hmm. our executive producer, Mr. Ken Barry. Ken, how are you doing today? I am hey, doing Ken. extremely well. Mm -hmm. And I want to say a special thank you to all of those who have work so hard I tell you this has been a love of labor and uh, our model we use all the time I don't know if you said it already the teamwork does what makes the dream, makes dream, the dream work, work. And right, so, so many people are saying well why would we keep on dreaming oh. well this is why thanks to, to, to so many folks we, we decided to come up with a new theme this year called victory beyond the dream because everyone has a victory to celebrate but we have to find it and let me say and we wake up too. And, and we wake up as, as well but I want to say a special thank you to, for mentioning all the sponsors of Donnie for hanging in there all these okay. years because it's been a long, a long, a long haul. And, and the, the community has been so supportive of this program. I just want to just kind of highlight a little bit some special segments that's going to be taking place this year with Portland Public Schools. We have students that are participating from various schools. We have community members who are going to be speaking. We have a special segment that we're going to be using video inserts where we're honoring Minnie Bell Johnson, one of the original founders of Bethel AME Church here in Portland, the late Clara Peoples, mm -hmm. along with Geneva Knowles. I think we talked a little bit earlier. Bruce talked a little bit about that with Paul Knowles. We want to thank him for being here. Rosemary Anderson, we're going to be honoring, along with, um, uh, let's see, uh, the Jim Pettyjohn, mm -hmm. uh, Herdis and Dorothy Hadley were the first African Americans to actually establish a bakery, which started in Oregon City. Mm -hmm. So we're, those are some of the Lifetime Achievement Award recipients that we're going to be honoring. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, we're going to be a, doing a couple special segments. As you know, uh, Janice Scroggins and Linda Hornbuckle passed away last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to say a special thank you to uh, Representative uh, Lou Frederick, who basically, uh, Donnie and I was down uh, along with the girls mm -hmm. uh, back in March in Salem when the Oregon legislature opened up and they made provisions for a special resolution honoring Linda Hornbuckle mm -hmm. and uh, Agenda Scroggins. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing a special segment tribute to them because even though they're gone, you know, embodied, the spirit still continues within us because they, for all these years, mm -hmm. have been a very integral part in making the program happen because well, of the outreach, working with young people, working with churches, with community members as well. Well, as part of that too, what people are going to really enjoy 
is the tribute in song from uh, featuring right. uh, Arietta Ward and mm -hmm. LaRonda Steele, Marietta Callie mm -hmm. Wells, and Nafasaria Scroggins mm -hmm. Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they touched us when they sang oh, yeah. at the legislature. Yeah. So I'm looking yeah. forward yeah. to that. They, they, they sang a cappella, mm -hmm. right. and it was the most beautiful yeah. thing that yeah. they, they ever heard in the Oregon legislature. So That's it. That's we're going we're gonna to get a taste of that. It's going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's going to be beautiful. But again, I want to say a special thank you to all the people, the, the production team. I tell mm -hmm. you, we, we have a, a, a production team of probably 80 to 90 people that have been coming to meetings since October, mm -hmm. uh, making Making sure that we have all of our technical expertise in place. Also, it's going to be aired here, mm -hmm. right here on Portland Community Media, but live, mm -hmm. not delayed, mm -hmm. but but live. And we'll say a special thank you to Janelle. Channel 11. Channel 11. We we'll want to thank Janelle. We also want to thank Chris uh, Chris uh, Frizzell mm -hmm. for his work. He's mm -hmm. been working uh, on the outside of the, the studio here, making sure that we had some things going on. Because one of the things we want to make sure is that the program is moving. Mm -hmm. And so we have a, a large amount of people that are going to be helping you run the left stage, the right stage, mm -hmm. and the green room. Thanks to Gwen uh, Thompson, just to name a few folks. And J.W. Friday and Kevin Berry mm -hmm. will be doing the special segment honoring Clara people. So mm -hmm. we're, we're really excited That's about beautiful. that. And also I'm excited about the Paul Knowles, Geneva Knowles, and Mel Brown mm -hmm. segment. That is going to kind of envision that as being a, a kind of a block of just building it up and i was inspired by hearing mel brown when i went to, to jimmy max i guess it was about and i don't go out that often because they don't let me out but uh i went out and and i i said let me take in some live music and mel brown and his his uh, b3 oregon group touched me i said wow this has got to be part of mlk mm -hmm. you know and you'll see why mm -hmm. because his his music industry i mean his his talent his his gift it's so unique, mm -hmm. and you know, in particular, and I know they talked a little bit earlier about who, who he's so humble, mm -hmm. but yet still, he's touched so many lives. Diana Ross, Michael Jackson, all those folks in his own way, mm -hmm. has, he's touched them. So we're honored to honor those who are around us. We also want to say a special thank you to Derek McDuffie and mm -hmm. his group who's going mm -hmm. to be performing because yes. we want to honor our local groups that are going to be here mm -hmm. along with um, Jarrell, uh, Hosley. Jar Jarrell Hosley mm -hmm. along with also uh, Ronnie Wright mm -hmm. and his group uh, Lo Love Be Speak, speak. Mm -hmm. uh, and Be last Speak, Be speak Love. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. I have to mm -hmm. get used to that. That's okay. And the last... I heard them in, in person. Oh, yeah. They're beautiful. I know. Beautiful. I know. It's great to see that mm -hmm. kind of talent right in our own neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, Coming down from Seattle and Renton, Washington, mm -hmm. will be Danelle Damon mm -hmm. yeah. and Greater Works. And they're known not locally, but nationally mm -hmm. because they received all kinds of national awards. And they're going to close out the program. Mm -hmm. And we want to say a special thank you to Highland Christian Center mm -hmm. Campus because yeah. the staff there has been uh, exceptional. Uh, if, you, if you're driving they down Broadway are. right now, mm -hmm. thanks to Johnny Lapkin and, mm -hmm. and Highland, there's a billboard there, mm -hmm. you know, with Dr. Hardy welcoming folks and encouraging folks to come on next Monday, January 18th, 11 until 6 o'clock, live on Portland Community Media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else can I say? You can say a lot, boy. I I'm tell you, just I'm turn really, you loose on this. No, I'm really a very quiet, shy person here. But but yeah, but we, we're so honored to have, to have well, this it's, opportunity. It's been a pleasure to work with you for... Mm -hmm. These many years, yes. Ken, since the very well. Beginning. Wait a minute. What's your radio name, man? You know, back YSOL, <laughs> right on the corner. Crown Prince of Rhythm and Blues. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've seen those sound. videos. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Photos yeah. We're of, talking the '70s yeah. there. I mean, I've we're talking photos. a long time ago. Right, I mean, right. we go all the way back to to Jefferson. Speaking of Jefferson. Mm -hmm. the, the Jefferson Dancers is celebrating 40 years this mm. year. And they're part of the program. And they're part of the program mm -hmm. again. We're yeah. fortunate to, to have school. them. Irvington School. Irvington School. We're demos. We're demos. Yep. Uh, Lane Elementary School. Lane Elementary from yep. Woodlawn. That's it. Uh, That's Buckman it. School. Mm -hmm. And I'd be, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that, because I've been up since 6 o'clock this morning. So if I seem like I'm running kind of fast, mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep my energy that level up. So I, you. You no. are always well, running. 6 o'clock this morning started with <laughs> Ari Etta and also Junior Johnson on KBO. Mm -hmm. Radio, right, and I right. couldn't help. We can't, I'll be remiss if I didn't say a special thank you to KBOO Radio, mm -hmm. who will be simulcasting the whole program live on 90.7 FM, and also George Page. Mm -hmm. George Page had the vision for us doing what we call the Soul Strip back in the early 1980s, mm -hmm. and thanks to Shahid Hamid, who mm -hmm. is back in Portland, we're so happy that he's here. Mm -hmm. He so right down the street, about two blocks from here, we'd meet in his business establishment for all of us to come up with a plan of how could we celebrate Dr. King's birthday by preempting all the programming the entire day. We just took 
the two three hour blocks kevin berry lanita duke jw friday dupree casey phil bethune tim warren just to name a few of the people and mm -hmm. that we're, that we're honoring as well as we go through and the he day just next grew Monday. out of that studio it, it mushroomed it, it mushroomed couldn't hold all the people that wanted right. to express something because what happened day. was we were downtown in a warehouse mm -hmm. kibu was mm -hmm. down on yam hill mm -hmm. and my mother i brought my mother involved too because she mm -hmm. writes poetry and mm -hmm. wrote all this stuff and did a lot of community work she would bring community members and started you know basically having choirs down there mm -hmm. all of a sudden there was no room mm -hmm. so the youth next sound. Th yep you sounds that got started down there so we ended up starting uh, actually 1985 at portland public schools mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, it's, it's mushroom like since then mm -hmm. right whitaker and jefferson university jefferson. of portland yep. yeah we want to thank oh that's it yes yep Indeed. but you know it's nice that we that we've come through the different venues and we love having it in the community but we're there's a couple of things about Highland that makes it really neat. One is it's an accessible facility. Mm -hmm. Right. And two is, as we talked about earlier, it, it, it's a church. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And spiritualism was part of the civil rights mm -hmm. movement. It gave it its, its sustenance, its strength to, exactly. to endure the, mm -hmm. you know, uh, dogs being sicked on you and, and the beatings and jail and all mm -hmm. those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. it gives people a little bit of a flavor from where the movement emanated, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and the kind of environment that, that many of the people who fought and died for mm -hmm. freedom laid down their lives exactly. Uh, exactly. and endured a lot of, of, of suffering mm -hmm. in order to get equality and rights throughout this and country. So speaking of suffering and speaking of other activities, you want to say a special thank you to the uh, Scanner newspaper who will have mm -hmm. their breakfast yes. on the same morning. Vancouver uh, Avenue Baptist 30th. Church. Their 30th, exactly. Mm -hmm. Vancouver Avenue Baptist Church. And Thanks there's a celebration Raymond. in yeah. Vancouver as right. well right. now. Right. So, right. And we, we welcome the fact that there are more celebrations mm -hmm. and opportunities for people to get out and think about the civil rights movement that was led by Dr. King and the things that he did exactly. in, in his leadership. And I, understand I want to go back okay. to KBO though. Right. Yep. www.kboo.fm. Mm -hmm. That means our program is worldwide. Exactly. So we want you to call somebody and tell them mm -hmm. that uh, they can get the program. Some of your relatives, nationally, internationally, your friends, mm -hmm. people that used to live here, call them and, and give them www.kboo.fm is the station where you can get at least the audio portion of our program from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Monday uh, the the 18th of January 2016. And we also want to say a, a special thank you to Lee and some of our social media mm -hmm. gurus. Mm -hmm. uh, they are going to Sheila. be making sure, mm -hmm. Sheila, making sure that uh, we're going to be posting pictures during the program at our website, which is worldartsfoundation.org. Mm -hmm. Worldartsfoundation.org. So if you can't make it, or you can listen to it on the radio, you want to see some of the visuals, mm -hmm. we have about 10 to 12 photographers mm -hmm. who will be snapping pictures, and we're going to try to update uh, mm -hmm. the upload as quickly as possible during the day as well. So I'm sitting with two what most people would consider retirees. But, yeah. um, I need to I go think, back to work to get I some think, rest. because uh, yeah. I, think, I think your tea's upside down. You're both refired. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you are always charged up. You're always doing something. It's very um, contagious. And as a part of the, the production team, I know what it's like to be around you. Well, now you, you know the, the like, fire going. Well, as Paul Harvey would say, now you know the rest of the story <laughs> because we're going to pass it on to you. Yeah, so, okay. yeah. so get ready. But, yeah, that, that, there is a real torch, and it's in well, the hearts of our leaders. In and they are bringing that to our community. In closing, let me just remind you that uh, it's our 31st annual tribute to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., sponsored by the World Arts Foundation on January 18th. See you there.